as I said, she does paint a few landscape paintings. I'm going to show you a few of them. Uh, these are once again uh, fairly early uh, in the 1860s, 1869, uh, the harbor at Laurent uh, from the National Gallery. Uh, and you can see once again this sort of um, triangular uh, composition where you're sort of uh, looking down and you have the probably Edma, but uh, a young lady is seated on the wall and then a kind of vista behind it. Um, you know, we know that she's gone out uh, with her family uh, to paint these. And uh, so what you're seeing is this lively brushwork, uh, diagonal movement, and uh, painted out of doors, uh, which, as we said, was considered to be uh, well, the, the new ideas in art at the time. Uh, this was also a painting that Berthe Morisot gave to Manet as a present. Some details here. This one's kind of interesting because uh, it has been compared with a Manet, uh, and I was able to find a picture of that, so we'll, we'll look at this. This is the view of Paris from uh, the Trocadero. Uh, in other words, uh, they are looking over Paris, they're seeing a vista, uh, and it is in Santa Barbara, California, painted 1871 to 72. Now. She paints this close to home. This is just down the block from where she lives. Um, and she, it, it's in her suburb, uh, which is an upper class suburb. And of course, Paris has not uh, grown as large as it is today. <laughs> uh, so she's looking out over this vista of Paris, and you may be able to see some of the monuments of Paris in the background. Uh, but uh, she can't just go into Paris and start painting, uh, because a genteel woman, uh, a woman of any respectability, would not travel alone, uh, go into the city, and uh, she would you know, have to be accompanied by someone. So when Morisot uh, does paint landscape paintings, they are generally landscapes that show views that are close to her home or where they're vacationing. I also might point out that it, it is believed that the women in the picture are her sisters and her niece. So it, you know, there's this kind of indication uh, that although they're still in their own neighborhood, you know, she's, she's, she's gone out with someone. This is the painting that uh, many critics say influenced that painting. Uh, it's by Edouard Manet, the view of the Universal Exposition of 1867. Now, they're talking about like a World's Fair Universal Exhibition uh, that was held in Paris. It's often said that this Manet influenced Morisot's painting. So let's see what that influence could be. Well, they're both panoramic views of Paris. They're both painted from a similar spot, although uh, Manet is, you know, much closer. But it seems to me, and this is just me looking at them, it seems to me that they're very different in almost every other way. Uh, they're different in mood, they're different in color, they're different in brushstrokes. Um, Manet's picture is, is uh, bustling. Uh, it's got many, many people in it. I mean, this is the World's Fair. This is the uh, Universal Exposition. Uh, and uh, the colors are much darker. Uh, it's as though you are you know, approaching uh, the exposition, uh, you're closer to it, you're, uh, because obviously Manet could get closer to it. He could wander around anywhere he wanted. He was a man. Morisot's painting is very different. Uh, looking at them, I actually feel that Morisot's painting is much more successful. Uh, her picture is totally changed in mood. It's serene. Uh, instead of including all sorts of different people from different walks of life, um, she's, it's an intimate view. She has her family members there. But the color is so much fresher and uh, very light and atmospheric. And, uh, of course, the view is far more distant. And we, we think there, but the man who could walk up into the, what was going on and the woman who had to stand back and look at it from afar. Uh, and yet, you know, I, I just cannot see this painting as being dependent on the Manet. Uh, you know, maybe just in the same idea of, okay, let's paint panoramic views of Paris, but her interpretation is so totally different.
that uh, it shows a very totally independent and uh, mature artist. And here we have these wonderful details. Uh, we show you her, her lively <laughs> uh, brush strokes, which uh, she's, what, she just has wonderful brush strokes. Um, she is, if you want to say she's restricted to domestic subjects, or you could say she takes these subjects uh, which you know, used to be sort of looked down on. I mean, that's not very important. That's just ordinary things, and, and they're even a woman's life. I mean, how could this possibly be important? And you often do run into that idea today in many different fields. Um, but uh, she makes these fine art. Um, and painting domestic subjects would certainly be more acceptable from a woman than you know, trying to go out and paint you know, something in bustling Paris. Uh, she has her studio at home. She essentially sets up a room in her house uh, where she can go and paint. And then presumably if she's called away um, with visitors or family affairs or something, she can uh, put her paintings aside and then go do that and then come back. Um, her pictures show intimate, everyday activities uh, and a very fresh view of daily life. Remember, she was looking for freshness and spontaneity in her work, and uh, she achieves it, certainly. Um, this is probably one of her most famous of her works. Uh, it's called The Cradle from 1872, uh, and it shows, once again, it shows her sister uh, with their newborn baby. Uh, so it's the, you know, the mother who has... Uh, who is close to her child, she's looking over her child. Um, there is absolutely nothing sentimental about any of Berth Morisot or Mary Cassatt's paintings of mothers and children. And that is probably one reason why they are uh, still received so well. Uh, tender care, but, you know, love between mother and child, but nothing that's overtly um, soupy <laughs> or overly sentimental. Um, and I don't, when I look at this, I keep thinking about how mothers, and they still are, but particularly in earlier years with the less medical care, did worry about their children. Um, I'm not sure about Cassatt, and I know uh, some of Cassatt's uh, siblings did not live. Um, and so that was always a threat. Uh, well, it still is today, but I think even more so in the 19th century. Her work is of the highest technical quality. She can have, you know, very, very refined shapes and brush strokes, and she can also have things that are, you know, very, very bold. So those stripes, for example. Um, the brush strokes are always very lively. They are varied. They have this, that we said, the freshness to them. And the hues that she used, of course, uh, we always associate the Impressionist with pastels. Um, pastels are colors that light has been, white. Pastels are colors that white has been mixed with. And uh, they seem to be much more light filled, which of course is what she's very interested in. This was one of the four paintings uh, that Berthe Morisot exhibited at that first Impressionist exhibit of 1874. And so I want to talk to you a little bit about that. Um, this is another painting that is believed to have been exhibited uh, in the first Impressionist exhibit. It's called La Lecture, or Reading, and uh, once again, it's her sister, Edma, is uh, sitting out in a uh, field, uh, presumably some kind of family gathering. Uh, maybe they've gone out for a picnic uh, out into nature, and uh, she's reading. It's now in the Cleveland Museum of Art. It was painted in 1873. And so it seems to me if the, uh, the caption in the exhibition catalog is reading, uh, this, one might, uh, this one would be uh, more likely than the one that was painted uh, some three or four years earlier. You can see the white dress and this idea of painting out of doors in natural light uh, and how the white picks up different colors uh, from the surrounding landscape. All things that we, you know, associate with the Impressionist art. 
and I found this quote on the web uh, from Berth Moriso uh, talking about this idea of how she wanted to see and create nature in her art. She says, every day I pray that the good Lord will make me like a child. That is to say that he will make me see nature and render it the way a child would without preconceptions. And it was this uh, fresh new look at nature rather than um, you know how it had been practiced and codified uh, um, by the more traditional artists uh, for centuries, where they would have rules and you just make up your landscape and put it down. Um, so Berth Morisot is the one of the founding members of the Impressionists, and by the founding members we mean she's one of the first of the Impressionists. Uh, she she exhibits in the first Impressionist exhibit. Um, now, the first Impressionist exhibit was 1874. It was not called the first Impressionist exhibit until later. Um, basically, they had a group of artists who were independent artists. Some of them weren't getting into the salon at all. And they were considered to be radical, some of them, or maybe just not good enough, whatever. And um, so they got together and they decided that they were going to put on their own art ex exhibition. Now today, well, that sounds perfectly normal. We have galleries, we have um, you know, groups often can put on their own exhibition. But that was a radical thing. Uh, back in 1863, when Manet was rejected by the Salon, there was a big outcry. And the artist said, "There's." Just too many people being rejected. Uh, we think the jury's, you know, not fair. Uh, we want in, essentially. And so the emperor said, "Okay, we'll give you an exhibition." And they gave them an exhibition that was called the Salon des Repousses, or the the exhibition of the refused works. Well, that was 11 years before this. And uh, what I was saying in my survey class was that idea bore fruit. The idea that, wait a minute, we don't have to be in the salon. Maybe there's another way to get our pictures shown. But in that case, it was a refused works exhibition, uh, certainly not terribly prestigious. Uh, and it also uh, was still put on by the government. But that idea starts to percolate. And of course, there's uh, intervening uh, things that happen, uh, including the Franco-Prussian War. But in 1873, uh, a number of these independent artists start saying, hey, let's put on our own show. And they do in 1874. They hire a hall. They you know, make up you know, posters and advertise. Uh, they have a catalog. And uh, they invite people. Now, what are they going to call themselves? Uh, not all of them actually were following what we today look at as the Impressionist style. Um, and that word had not yet been coined. Uh, so they called themselves the Société Aninomé des Artistes. And I will ask people to please forgive me because I don't pronounce French very well. Uh, someone told me I wasn't arrogant enough to pronounce French well. <laughs> but uh, that's a nice excuse. I have no ear is the problem. Uh, I can read, but uh, pronunciation comes a little harder for me. So. I'll try to be close. But it translates as the Anonymous Society of Artists. Words, these are all you know, unknown artists. Uh, uh, they're not known to the public yet. Um, of course, uh, the story of how the Impressionists got their name uh, is that uh, a disapproving critic went to this exhibit and saw a painting by Monet, Claude Monet, that was called Impression Sunrise. And he said, these, these, these horrible artists, they don't even finish their works. They're, they're nothing but, they just give us these impressions. They're nothing but impressionists. So it was considered to be you know, a very nasty thing to say. And uh, they kind of liked it. They said, yeah, well, that's what we are. We're impressionists. So they started calling themselves impressionists. And uh, the name came into being. OK, so before that happened, uh, they're the Society Anonyme. And, uh, Berth Morisot is invited by Degas uh, to participate. Actually, he does it. Uh, Degas is also uh, from you know, this sort of upper class background, uh, uh, upper middle class background. And uh, what he does is he writes a letter, uh, which we have not the whole letter, but most of it. But he writes a letter to the girl's mother. You know, this would be the proper way to do it, uh, because they're still unmarried young ladies at home. 
and invites birth. And he does say that we need, you know, your, you know, uh, fame, you know, that you're, you're well known and we need uh, your, your, the quality of your work. Um, he also invites Edma, uh, who is by this time, of course, married, has a child, um, but uh, she does not participate, as we, we know. Um, and they do publish lists of who's going to exhibit. And the early one, uh, she's not mentioned, but then when they you know, have republish, uh, she is definitely oh, on the list. Um, one of the problems for her, I think, making this choice was be that uh, she knew a lot of artists, uh, a lot of professional artists. And among them, of course, was Edouard Manet, who wanted desperately to get into the salon himself. He also wanted to paint his own way. He you know, wanted his cake, he wanted to eat it too. He uh, wanted to be, I guess, uh, to paint his way and have the salon accept it. Uh, and Pouvet. Um, and uh, both of them did not, said, no, no, you should not, you know, hook up with these radical artists. Uh, you know, you should continue down the traditional path. And they, were, they discouraged her, uh, both because of, I suppose, because of uh, the, the notoriety of, of going with a radical art, artistic group. Berth Morisot made that decision on her own, despite the opposition from uh, her uh, older painting friends. Uh, she chose the radical group of the Impressionists, and she chose that radical step of exhibiting independently. And she embraced the Impressionist principles, which of course are made by her as much as anybody else, because they're things like uh, everyday life, uh, the freedom of an artist to, to paint independently, um, and of course the idea of painting light. And um, so she feels that she really is closer to these artists and that this is the group she wants to be associated with. So she chooses that step herself. Um, so she says so she is the first revolutionary modern uh, woman artist in a sense. Her style, and we've been seeing examples of it all along. This is actually a little later uh, from 1878, but uh, I thought it was such a beautiful picture. I'd use it to talk about her style. Um, it, her style is light-filled uh, with pastel colors, uh, and you can see how the colors, um, you know, you don't have just local color on, say, your garment. You know, it's not just a white garment. Uh, it's got all sorts of different tones and colors within it, which is, as I said, these are the things that we now call Impressionism. Um, her compositions are actually very organized. Uh, they work just beautifully, but when she paints them, she tries to, she, she makes them feel as though they're spontaneous, as though they're accidental, as though you sort of just walked in and saw this woman here. Um, of course, it's very, uh, very well balanced uh, with uh, a little bit of asymmetry and uh, just the, 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 the um, as we talked about, the deft brush strokes. Uh, it gives you a mood of spontaneity, uh, a mood of intimacy. You know, you've walked in, here's the light shining on this young lady, uh, flowers, garment. Uh, yeah, so you can, you're very, it says close to her. In 1874, Berthe Morisot did get married, and she married Eugene Manet, who was Edouard's brother, so the brother of the artist. Um, so, it's kind of interesting, um, Manet, uh, Manet's sister-in-law <laughs> is this very avant-garde, avant-garde artist. Um, and I've tried to find a, a picture of Eugene and we'll be seeing some of them. So he starts appearing in her pictures. Um, this is uh, Eugene Morey saw it on the Isle of Wight, which is one place that they went for vacation. So you're seeing him uh, inside looking out through the window. So you have this uh, indoor-outdoor uh, relationship. Uh, she also had a daughter. In 1878, her daughter Julie was born. Uh, she adored Julie, as uh, you can imagine. And uh, Julie appears over and over. You can see her growing up in her mother's paintings. Uh, here we see a picture of her with her nurse uh, when she's just a small child, you know, probably less than two years old at that point. 
uh, we see her uh, a little bit older when she's having her sewing lessons with her nanny. Um, and of course, one of the questions we all ask is, well, if you're having to have children, how can you possibly be painting? Well, she did have domestic help. Um, she had a wet nurse. Uh, virtually any woman of her um, social class, upper middle class and upper middle class, would have, uh, have servants and have a wet nurse. She paints other subjects as well. Uh, one of the subjects that seems to pop up in her work, we mentioned reading uh, and uh, family members. Uh, this is uh, a picture of a woman uh, at, a, at a mirror, the lady at her toilet. Uh, it's sort of an unusual view. You've seen her doing that before. You saw her doing uh, back views with uh, Eugene Monet, uh, which makes you feel, once again, very intimate, that we're right here standing behind the woman, seeing what she's doing in her own boudoir. Um, and she becomes um, not you know, a particular portrait of somebody, but you know, the subject of, of the artwork. Um, the theme of the mirror appears a number of times in Morisot's work. And of course, uh, mirrors are often used in uh, the history of art. Uh, the idea that uh, the mirror reflects life like the painting, which is sort of the imitation of life. And then if you paint a mirror, are you painting an imitation of an imitation? It was something that uh, Velothkath, among others, uh, in the 17th century uh, played around with uh, using this idea of a mirror in the back of his painting, uh, Las Meninas, and also his uh, Venus. Um, now, when we talk about mirrors, so we think of, okay, it imitates reality. On the other hand, it somewhat distorts it. it reverses everything. Um, mirrors reflect. But the word reflection refers not just to reflecting the outward appearance. We often talk about someone who is reflect, uh, reflection as someone contemplating, someone thinking, uh, someone involved in their own inner mental life. And so we're also seeing that in Berth Morisot's paintings of the mirror. This one's called Psyche. Um, and it shows a full-length woman standing at uh, one of these uh, long, full-length mirrors that uh, can swing back and forth. And that type of mirror in French is a, a psyche. Um, psyche, of course, also means the soul or the spirit. You think of the Greek myth of uh, Psyche and, Ar and Cupid or Eros. Um, so it has both that idea of reflection in the two senses. The mirror reflects the outward appearance of the woman, but she's thinking. She has her inner life. And so uh, the mirror is reflecting appearance, but the art suggests an inner being, uh, and you have uh, both suggested. Uh, we said she could paint uh, out of doors whenever she could, uh, and here, you know, sort of a, a family outing, presumably, uh, young ladies. Uh, uh, taking a little boat. They're looking at you know, ducks. They're probably in the park or something. Uh, so uh, you have the summer's day. Uh, this was probably the painting exhibited under another name at the Fifth Impressionist Exhibition in 1880. Her style is free, sketchy, filled with out-of-door light. Let's see a little closer. And uh, I'm just going to start showing you some of the, the pictures. Uh, this, of course, is her husband, Eugene, and her daughter. And uh, he's being a good dad. <laughs> uh, we also see pictures within their household, uh, presumably a maid servant, uh, in the dining room. And uh, the little dog is there at the, at the uh, well, this is a fairly small picture. It's in the National Gallery in Washington. Um, it shows you the interior of the room and uh, the woman right in the center and the little dog at her feet. Here's some of the details. Um, this one is a uh, beautiful painting. Uh, it's in St. Petersburg Museum of Art. That's St. Petersburg in Florida, not the one in Russia. And uh, it's just filled with light and uh, beautiful blues and greens, particularly then with these warm tones popping up. Uh, wonderful thick brush strokes. Uh, this is not Julie. Um, I think they do know who the model was, who the little girl was. But it's just called Little Girl Reading. So it's another one of these reading pictures. 
quiet, introspective, and wonderfully painted. <laughs> uh, Julie growing up, just as Julie and her greyhound, Laerte, uh, Laertes. And uh, so here we see a very freely uh, painted picture. Uh, gives that feeling of spontaneity, a feeling as though maybe it's not completely, uh, it's an impression. <laughs> um, and another one which she shows uh, for the following year, her daughter playing the violin. On March 2nd of 1895, uh, Berth Morisot died of pneumonia. So she died in her 50s, um, not a terribly old person uh, for the 19th century. 